Our today's topic is macro evolution and the tree of life and in which we will be discussing about the evolution by natural selection. As we are very much familiar with the idea of evolution, that organisms have developed from simpler life forms to the complex life forms. And in paleontology, we have to study the fossils, to study all of the evolutionary aspect of the fossils. And one of the earlier scientists, Darwin, was the first scientist who laid the framework for the evolutionary biology 150 years ago. And his ideas were so elaborate at that time and so concise and understandable that even today no one has yet falsified Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection. And he wrote that in his book on the origins of species in 1859 and he was so uh, successful a scientist he was so prominent of his time that he influenced the work of other scientists of his time here you can see on the right side of the picture you can see the picture of charles darwin the charles darwin also made some of the branching diagrams of the phylogeny and this was the only illustration in on the origin of species of in his publication and here you can see the two species one is a another one is i right so the units that are 1 to 14 are the time intervals of variable length and the lowercase letters are a b c for example are showing the new species. So in this you can see a branching structure that is sort of uh, usual when species breaks into two more species. The process of speciation that we will be discussing later. So the Darwin as we have seen the illustration as well he was thinking of life as a tree of life. That uh, the life has evolved just like tree from a stem uh, develops into the branches and branching are branches are further dividing into further branches so darwin said that life had diversified to millions of species by the continued splitting of species from a common stem first the organisms were very simple but as they have evolved they have split into different species and he was able to explain for the first time the meanings of natural hierarchy of life. Earlier than Darwin, the Carlos Linnaeus was the first scientist who was able to devise some uh, hierarchical system of life. He uh, made some taxa, a taxa and he classified the organisms based on the morphologies. Now we have the Darwin who was trying to explain the tree of life, not only the physical forms, but also that how it reached to that being, right? So how a whole tree of life assembles and that is through the process of evolution. So the first thing is macro evolution as the name indicates macro, wherever the word macro comes, that means big so macro evolution is dealing with the broader aspect of evolution for example the paleontological aspects of evolution uh, such as the tree of life and the studies of processes over thousands and millions of years tree of life was not made in one day and so does the uh, processes which are changing and evolving for thousands of millions of years so the macro evolution is dealing with that and this is called macro evolution. Macro means big and so macro evolution is the big evolution. So another aspect of evolution is micro evolution. Micro evolution we can see in the laboratory in simple one experiment. The biologist and geolo uh, sorry, genetics, geneticists are working in the lab or, or in the field and they are working on the micro evolution. Micro means small. So microevolution is small evolution. Microevolution are all the smaller scales and shorter term processes 
studied by the biologists and geneticists in the laboratory or in the field. Now, Darwin worked all his life on his idea of evolution by the natural selection. This idea was not developed in some evening. It was developed by continuous work. He departed on his voyage, a famous voyage of a whole world. He circumvented the earth on HMS Beagle and in which he uh, visited different islands just like Galapagos Island in Southern America, right? So during uh, his journey, he was able to observe the diversity of life. And in, in that journey, he was able to study the geological samples as well as the biological samples in which he was able to see that there is evidence of a relationship in time and space. So if an organism is living at one place and we see the fossils of that and after that, you know, that, that organism changes into some other organism and we can still see the descendant of that fossil organism and that is in one space and also in the time, right? So the fossils are older but the contemporary organism are the relatively newer. And he was aware of the fossil record. He studied many fossils. And he was also influenced by the Malthus work, right? So Thomas Malthus was uh, an economist, right? So he was, his work was on the population. He said that population grows more, resources are very less. So only the, or, uh, the persons, the individual who can uh, better ad adapt to the uh, to achieve those resources can survive, other will die. So that was the uh, Malthus work. He, he worked on that and based on all these things, he divide, devised his theory of uh, natural selection. Now, principle of natural selection, only the organisms best adapted to their environment tend to survive and transmit gene their genetic in characteristics in increasing number to succeeding generation while those less adapted tend to be eliminated. These are the exact lines on his, from his uh, the publication. He said that organisms which are adapting, they will survive. Those who are, those who are not adapting, they will die. And uh, the natural selection is based on, if we, you know, divide it down, we divide it down, we can see the four postulates out of it. Uh, let's see what are those and nearly all species produce far more young than, than can survive to adulthood. So uh, this is uh, exactly the Malthus principle that organisms are more, resources are less. So in the less resources, only those will be able to survive who have the capability of surviving through adaptability. And the second is the young that survive tend to be those best adapted to survive right so those who are best adapted they will survive other will die now the characteristics uh, characters are inherited from parents to offspring so the characters that ensure survival will tend to be passed on only or uh, all right so we have some genes we have some characters that are helping some organism to survive so if those characters are present in some organism they will survive if there are no characters, that organism will die because those characters are helping him to survive. Now, the last four is the these survival characteristic will increase generation by generation. A cheetah who is, you know, maybe chasing an impala, he will evolutionarily uh, adapt to become more and more vigilant and more and more able to run. But what if uh, there is some limitation to that as well? He won't run uh, till the terminal uh, speeds because he has some body capabilities and those body capabilities will limit his run, right? But he will run till his limits. So, and so is the case for the evolution. Evolution will be uh, evolving an organism to its biological limits. So these were the evolution by the natural selection 
ideas that were giving, uh, given by the Darwin. And these whole things gave rise to a new science which is called Neo-Darwinism. And of course, we will be discussing that in the later lectures. So, this was about the macroevolution and tree of life.